Welcome back, everybody. Jeremy here again. Now, this lesson is sort of the culmination of all we've been working towards, where we really get to see Shapes XR in action. So let's start telling the story of our prototype. All right, so here's what I want to happen in this prototype. I want users to click on this button here to activate a whiteboard that appears in front of them. And I want them to use this button here to activate mixed reality. So we're going to do a little grouping of objects here just to make our lives easier. So each of these buttons is composed of two elements, the button itself and the icon on top. And I actually want to group the icon with the button. This is just going to help us once we get into the interactivity system. Okay, so let's begin by prototyping out how the buttons are gonna behave when users interact with them. So I'm gonna make three duplicates of this first scene. So we now have four scenes total and they're all identical. So let's go to scene two. And this is where I wanna show what this button looks like when a user hovers over it. So I'm gonna scale it up a little bit and then maybe raise it slightly off the surface and uh, then let's uh, let's give it a different color as well. All right, let's now go to scene three. And this is where I want to show what the button looks like when it's activated, when a user actually clicks on it. So for this scene, I'm actually going to scale the button down a little bit. And then uh, let's change the color to this green color here. Okay, and then finally on scene four, this is where I'm gonna build out the whiteboard. So using some of the same techniques we've used in the past, I'm gonna draw out my whiteboard, and this time I'm going to use the bending option here in the inspector just to give, give my whiteboard some dimension, give it a little bit of a concave surface. Uh, let's decrease the thickness, round the corners a little bit, and then uh, I'm gonna place it in my scene right above my menu. And just for fun, I'm going to add the Shapes XR logo to the whiteboard here, just so we have something interesting to look at. And uh, you can see I built a little handle here on the uh, whiteboard as well. And then to make my life easier, I'm going to group these objects together. And I should mention here that you can import your own 3D models, JPEGs, and PNGs into your projects, just like I did with the Shapes XR logo. So if you want to learn how to do that, just stick around to the end of the lesson, and I will show you how. All right, so now we have four scenes that show our prototype in four different states. Okay, now we really get to start adding some life to our prototype, and we're gonna do that by adding interactions to our project. Uh, now, once we've added the interactions, users who come into our space, they're gonna press a play button to experience the prototype, and when they do that, they will automatically teleport to your first viewpoint. So, we wanna make sure we've got that viewpoint set where we want it. So, let's just grab our viewpoint here and move it into the chair, and uh, we can always adjust that later. All right, so let's make sure we are on scene one. Then let's go to the interactivity menu by pressing this little lightning bolt button here. And uh, let's add our first interaction to this button on our menu. So click on add interaction. And the first interaction we're going to add is a hover interaction. So choose hover. So when users hover over the button, we want them to go to the next scene where we created that hover effect. So let's choose scene right here. Okay, so we've created our interaction, but the last thing we have to do is actually assign this interaction to the physical button in our scene. So we choose click to set, and then we just point at the button and pull the trigger button. So now this interaction is assigned to that button. So I'm gonna click okay, and you can see when I hover over the interaction on the menu, Shapes draws this nice curve from the interaction on the menu to the assigned object. So this is really handy when you've got lots of interactions on the same scene. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna move my left thumbstick here to the right to go to scene two, and we're gonna do the same thing here. Add interaction, hover, scene, click to set, assign it to the button, and now with this interaction, there are two variables that I need to change. I'm gonna change enter to exit. So when users hover off of the assigned object or they exit the object, that's what will trigger the next event. And secondly, when users hover off the button, I don't want them to go to scene three. I want them to go back to scene one where they originally started. So let's change that here. Okay, and while we're still on scene two, we're gonna add one more interaction. So click this button here, and this time we're going to choose click, 
scene, click to set, assign to the button. And in this case, all our variables are correct. When users click on this button, they'll automatically be taken to scene three. All right, let's move to scene three. So this is the scene that shows what our button looks like when it's actually being pressed. So I don't want this scene displayed for very long. This is just a quick transition scene. So we're gonna add a special interaction here. So click add interaction and then choose after delay and then scene. So what the after delay interaction does is displays the current scene for a set amount of time before automatically moving on to the next scene. So shape's default time is one second, uh, and that's a bit long for this effect. So let's just change that here to 0.2 seconds. So after the scene displays for 0.2 seconds, we automatically move on to scene four, which is what we want. All right, let's play back this interaction and see how it works. So make sure you're on scene one, and then the play button is actually your thumbstick. So just press in on it like a button, and you are automatically teleported to your viewpoint, and you can see how our hover effect is working nicely. In fact, if I hold up my left controller, you can actually see the stage numbers changing as I go through the prototype. And then I click on the button, and you can see that green button displayed for just a fraction of a second before moving on to the final stage. All right, we're gonna prototype out one final interaction, but this time I want you to practice doing it on your own. But don't worry, I'm gonna help you get set up. So let's go back to our scene menu, and I want you to duplicate scene four three times. So we have a total of seven scenes. On scene five and six, you're gonna add the same color and scale treatment to this button here that we added to our original button. So scene five should look like this, and scene six should look like this. All right, so now let's go to scene seven. Uh, now, if you remember in our original idea, this button here is meant to turn on pass-through or mixed reality. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite functions and shapes. Let's go back to the asset menu, choose primitives. And once again, we're gonna choose this inverted sphere, the same sphere that we use for our sky. So I'm gonna scale myself up really big so I can see this whole scene. And I want this new sphere to be bigger than the room that I created, but smaller than the sky sphere. Uh, now for my color tool, I'm going to select materials and choose pass through. And then I'm gonna apply that material to this inner sphere and voila, I can now go inside my sphere and see my world in mixed reality. So use this scene and practice adding more interactions. And your final playthrough should look something like this. And before we close, as I promised, let me quickly show you how to upload your own assets to ShapesXR. So go to the website, shapes.app. Uh, once you're in your dashboard, click on My Files. And then in the top right-hand corner, click Upload. And then you can either browse for your files or just drag them into this window. And then once your files are uploaded, just go back into Shapes and access the asset library. Choose My Files up here. And this is where you'll find all your uploads. Okay, everybody, thanks so much for joining me. That is it for this first round of tutorials, but keep an eye out for more videos to come in the future. Plus, we're going to be rolling out many more new features in the months to come. Be sure to share your designs on social media and tag us or use the hashtag ShapesXR. Have fun, and we look forward to seeing what you create. Bye, everybody.